just hope you guys can appreciate how hard it was to put together the selections for this video. It was like picking amongst favorite children. Although I do have a favorite cat, let's be real. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jacqueline. You can find me over on Instagram as at Jacqueline Salem. So if you like things about sewing, knitting, New York City lifestyle, you can hit the subscribe button down below and be notified when new videos are up. Today I have a really fun video for you. Originally I was going to film uh, my entirety of my sewing projects that I made in 2020 and I filmed it but it was so long and I just thought like this, it's just too much, it's too much. So I'm going to narrow it down a little bit, make it harder for myself actually, because I decided to film my top five favorites and my top five worst makes of 2020, just because I feel like I wanna share some of the things that didn't work out so well and why they didn't work out so well in hopes that you can make better decisions about your crafting and learn from my mistakes. So the first five makes that I'm going to show you are the ones that I consider to be my worst makes of 2020 and then the last five are the ones that I consider to be my best makes of 2020. So let's jump right into it. Before we get started with the video, I just want to make sure that you know that all of the patterns and the fabrics will be listed in the description box down below the video screen. So if there's anything that you want to refer back to or things that you want to try out for yourself, that's where you can find all of the info. Alright, so the first make that I consider one of my worst of 2020 is this Simplicity Toaster Sweater. And let me just start by saying that it is not because of the pattern. Simplicity A529 is one of my most made patterns. I'm pretty sure this is the sixth time that I have made this pattern. I love the pattern. The problem with it is the fabric. I fell in love with this fabric for the obvious reasons. The color is gorgeous. It's so hard to find camel colored fabric. I don't know why, like neutral colors like this. Um, but I love the look of the fabric and the cable knit really sold me on this. I think it's so beautiful. So I love the look of it, but it's just that the fiber content is not the most comfortable, unfortunately. Whenever I wear it, it does feel a little bit like plasticky and scratchy. So I'm sure that many of my followers who knit will totally understand this. It's just sometimes the difference in quality of the yarn that you're using really affects the finished product, and this was definitely the case for this sweater which is unfortunate because i love the patterning on it so much but i'm just not wearing it as much as my other ones because it's not that comfortable which is a shame because i really really love it so if you have any recommendations for camel colored knit fabrics let me know the second one on my list of worst makes is this dress right here this dress was inspired by a Cezanne dress. It's called the Jade Dress. I fell in love with the brand Cezanne a couple years ago. And since then, I've made quite a few dupes of their line. I really, really love the style line, the fabrics that they choose. I just think it's a really gorgeous brand. Unfortunately, this one didn't work out so well because the fabric match and the pattern were not the best match for one another. Visco's Linen Noil, this is what the fabric is, is one of my favorite fabric discoveries of last year. I made three different garments out of it, this one included. And the problem with it in this particular garment is that because it's a button-up dress, it lacks structure in the top, and the, the top buttons keep coming unbuttoned. The pattern is a hack of McCall's 7084. It's a dress pattern that I hacked to this um, strappy dress style and I do actually wear it. It's just annoying that it keeps popping open. I think I could fix it if I gave it more structure in the top so maybe some boning across the top to help keep that straight shape because if it's pulled up like it's not too big or too small the fit is really really good so I can wear it just fine if I'm like walking around but the problem is that the fabric sags a little bit in the middle from the weight of the fabric because it's kind of a bottom weight fabric you could make a top out of it but it's more like a dress or a bottom weight fabric in my opinion so the weight of the fabric pulls down the buttons and makes it want to gape a little bit right here and then we'll pop the second button open so for that reason it's on my list of worst makes of 2020. i do still wear it like i said but that really annoys me about it maybe i could fix it with the boning i do have boning so i'm going to alter it and give that a try and report back oh the next on my list of 
worst makes of 2020 is this dress right here. This is the Linda dress by Appaline Patterns. I love the look of Appaline Patterns. I have, I think, three of them in my pattern stash. This is the first one that I've made. It turned out a hair too small, first of all, but the real reason that I don't wear it, I think, is because the patterning on the stripe is vertical instead of horizontal. And for some reason, I'm just not used to seeing like vertical stripes on myself. I feel like that looks weird. Um, I do have to wear it with a belt to give my waist some shape just because that's my personal style and I like belting things to my waist. So it looks better when it's been belted to the waist. But for some reason, I, I never wear it. I just, I haven't even worn it one time except the day that I finished it. And I just don't, I don't love it. I don't know, which is a shame because I worked so hard on these straps, these adorable ruffled straps that I gathered to this piece of lace right here. And it's got this really pretty flounce, but I think it's just the way that I cut out the pattern pieces. I should have cut the stripes going horizontal and I think I would like that better. Next up on my list of worst makes for 2020 is this skirt right here. It was a good idea in theory. This is fabric that I got, it's mystery fabric, but it's an organza, so you could buy an organza and achieve the same look with a Bemberg rayon lining. Um, it was a good idea in theory. I wear this skirt so much that I really wanted some more short skirts and just separates in general in my wardrobe. And I thought, hey, I'll make a short, it's either a full circle or half circle. How big is this? It looks like a full circle, yep. Um, this is a full circle skirt. And it was too long when I first made it, so I chopped it to make it a little bit shorter, and then I ended up chopping it too much. So it's not really the fault of the fit or, you know, like the pattern itself. It's just that I made a mistake when cutting it too short. So this is just a word to the wise. Um, whenever you're cutting things shorter, make sure that, you know, you err on the side of caution because you can always cut off more, but you can't put it back on once it's gone. I could potentially add like a ruffle tier to it. I do have some fabric left over, but I'm not sure if it's enough, but I could try that out, making like a ruffled tier to add to it to make it a little bit longer, but because it's too short, I never wear it. And then the last project, on my list of worst projects of 2020 is this wrap style top right here. And I'm just really not happy with it. I never wear it because I am a pear shape. So wrap style tops can be a little bit challenging to fit sometimes because uh, I'm always cutting a smaller size on the top and then a larger size on the bottom. With this pattern, there's a lot of gaping in the front of it. This is new look 6560. And in the pattern suggestions, it does say silky types, and this is a silky type of fabric. I got this from Fab Scrap when I volunteered with them two years ago. But I think this pattern would be better suited for um, a fabric that has more structure to it to like help hold it up because the silky types tend to drape so much over it and when it's on... Okay, so I have it secured here have it secured here and I definitely cut my size but this just could pull that open like no problem whatsoever on this side so there's just something with the drafting in this pattern that doesn't work for my body shape I will say I love the sleeve on it though so I'm saving the pattern in my pattern stash because I think the sleeve pattern is a good one and I can always add that sleeve to different patterns um, as long as I match up like the arm side so that's on my list of worst makes for 2020. I do love this fabric, so I'm sad that it just didn't work out. But yeah, I know I can attach like little clips and stuff there to help keep it closed or a snap closure. But because the fabric is such a lightweight silky, you'd see it and it just, it just wouldn't look good. Plus the facing is always trying to pop out on this despite understitching and the whole nine yards. So worst makes for 2020. And I have one bonus one here that I'm gonna throw into my worst makes of 2020, and that is this dress. Don't get me wrong, I wear it quite a bit actually, and it's comfortable. It's just that it didn't turn out as I had envisioned. Let me show you the pattern really quick. The pattern that I used is McCall's 8166. When I first opened this pattern, it was definitely a red flag that the cups in it, because it's kind of like a corset, 
show you again. So the cups in it right here are drafted based on the size of the pattern and not based on a bra cup size. I don't have to explain how bra sizes work to you guys, but just so you know, this does not come with cup sizes for the top, which I think is a red flag when it comes to fitting this, and it certainly was for me. So I cut the size of probably 10 or 12, that's what I usually grade between when it comes to McCall's patterns, and the cups were just enormous on me. Like I said, I'm a pear shape, so I had to do a lot of fitting with it. It just never looked right. It still doesn't look great. And the fabric that I used was not the right choice for it either because it's a dark and patterned fabric. So you can't see any of the detail of that cup because the fabric is dark and patterned. So if I were to make this again, which I wouldn't, but if I were to do this over again, I would certainly pick a lighter colored fabric so that you can see the architecture of the top. The top I added separately to this half circle skirt. I love half circle skirts. They work perfectly for my body. But if I were to make this again, I would certainly pick a lighter colored fabric so that you can see the architecture and the design of the bodice. And so it wouldn't be so obscured as it is with this dark and patterned fabric. So these are my worst makes of 2020. And now we're gonna go on to my best and favorite makes of 2020. You knew it was gonna be on here. I really honestly almost cannot go an entire video without mentioning the cami skirt designed by The Hemming. This is a free pattern. This is my second one. The first one I wore to death two years ago or in 2019 when I first made it. So I decided to make another one last year and I'm so glad I did. This is probably the most worn item in my wardrobe. This and the terracotta colored one, which I wear just as much as I wear this new one. Um, I even have a backup fabric of the terracotta colored skirt because that one is getting so faded now that I want to be able to make it again. So I bought backup fabric to remake that one once I feel like the fabric is faded beyond what looks nice anymore. But I went ahead and made another one in this forest green. Tensil Twill is a wonderful fabric for this pattern. I really love it. I could honestly make this in like five other colors and I'd probably still wear them all equally. The Cami Skirt by The Hemming, one of my absolute favorites. Super easy to modify the tiers based on like what works for your body's proportion the best because you kind of want this first tier to end at the widest point of your hips and not to go below that because then it drags out your hips in like weird proportions, but it's super easy to change that up. And like I said, free pattern. So my favorite item in my wardrobe is also the least expensive pattern. This is a relatively new make. I made this one in December during Vlogmas. It's based on a skirt by the brand Theory Coulson. Uh, very much inspired by Jamie Beck, a photographer, an American photographer who lives in France. She was just such a like muse for my creativity last year, like really revolutionized like getting into photography more and taking better project photos for my Instagram. And her personal style I just find so beautiful. It kind of gives me this permission to incorporate a more romantic vibe into my style, which I'm really embraced this year. So this is one of those items. It's, it's perfect. Let's just say, I like, I love this skirt so much. This skirt is perfection. It's a half circle skirt that I added a gathered tier. It's essentially the cami skirt in a way. Like I kind of use this as a basis to inform how I would sew this one, but I made a half circle skirt and then added a gathered tier of pleated chiffon. This is silk chiffon on the top. So it's so luxe and soft. And then I have this polyester pleated chiffon that I got from Mood Fabrics, and then it's lined in a black cotton lawn for the top part of it, but the bottom part of the tier is not lined, so this part's got like a see-through iridescence to it. It's just such a cool piece in my wardrobe. I absolutely love it. There is one thing though that's like kind of a bummer is that it needs alteration. It's just slightly too big for me, and the only way I can take it in is by taking the excess out of the center back seam where the zipper is. And let's just say that sewing with silk chiffon is not the easiest of tasks and altering it is not high on my list to do. It's not so big that I think it's not cute. It's just that it would look so much better if it was sitting at my natural waist instead of uh, sitting below it. So 
At some point I will take the time to alter this, but it will have to be when I muster up the wherewithal to unpick and rework this silk chiffon skirt. But other than that, I love it. It is by far like one of my favorite pieces of 2020. The next project on my list of best for 2020 has to be this skirt that was a collaboration with Picnic House Supply. I love doing collaborations with other brands, but when I but I do them so infrequently because I just want to make sure that any brands I collaborate with are really aligned with like my personal values and is something that I truly like because obviously I don't want to promote something to people who follow me that I don't believe in. Picnic House Supply is a fantastic brand. She's Brooklyn based, which is amazing. And she stocks a lot of like sustainable fabrics and dead stock fabrics and just like all these, her taste is like impeccable. Case in point, this Merchant and Mills linen fabric, which was perfect for this make. This one is another one inspired by the photographer, Jamie Beck. She designed a skirt called the Tablier Jupe with the brand Luxe Provence. And it's a gathered apron wrap style skirt. I didn't have enough fabric to do the gathered apron wrap style skirt, so instead to dupe it, I just made a half circle skirt that I attached an ultra long tie to the waistband that I can then wrap and tie around my waist in an apron style effect, even though it's not necessary to keep the skirt up. I absolutely love the skirt. It's a kind of midi airing on maxi length and it's so lightweight and flowy. This fabric was a dream, just like all the fabrics that Kelly stocks. I mean, if you're familiar at all with Merchant and Mills fabric, then you know that this fabric is really high quality, but it's just such a great fabric. I love the color of it. I need to check out her website and see if she has any additional uh, fabrics of this type in a different colorway because I would love to work with it again or I'd even honestly settle for using the same fabric just in a different application. That's how much I loved this. So it was just the perfect marriage of uh, fabric and pattern. And again, I just used a half circle skirt um, as the basis for the pattern, which I used by self-drafting based on a YouTube video. I had all of my makes of 2020 sitting on this rack for like three weeks, I want to say. This is the first skirt that I pilfered from the rack, so that tells you a lot because they were just sitting in here. My best clothes were in here this whole time and I really wanted to wear them. It's hard to like, you know, get dressed in the morning without the best pieces in your wardrobe. This was the first thing that I pilfered from the rack, so that tells you just how much I love this skirt. Next up on my list of best makes is the Etoile Dress by French Poetry. French poetry patterns were such a good discovery for me this year. I have a lot of French influence in my style and I'm also just obsessed with all things French these days because I'm dying to go as I've mentioned in previous videos. But a lot of my style has a lot of French influence which I didn't really put together until my friend Emily pointed this out to me. So I was really excited to discover French uh, pattern brand um, French poetry just because she's one of the few there are like a lot of them don't translate their patterns and it's not that I can't use Google Translate or figure it out based on the photographs but sometimes it's not always clear like what you're supposed to do in instructions and there's not always a illustration for every single step so it's just more work I guess I should say but French poetry does put her patterns in English and I just love the drafting of her patterns. I do blend between two sizes when I make them, but once I do, there's not really, for all the times I've made, this dress and the Polaris top, um, which is another favorite that I didn't include in this video, but I love that top so much also. I never have to do alteration beyond blending the two sizes together. It always fits like just the way that I want to, and this dress, is no exception to that. It's just the perfect sundress. It's a v-neck button-down dress and the design does actually include ties around the sleeves but I've left them off for most of the versions of this dress. I think I've made it like three maybe four. I've definitely used it three times but four times to hack something else which is coming up in a second. So this is just I think the best sundress pattern that's in my wardrobe. It's so flirty and comfortable for summer and yeah, just love this one. And the fabric is from Blackbird Fabrics. It's a viscose poplin, so it has that lovely drape to it with the viscose. And it's lightweight and comfortable because of cotton. 
I think if I had to pick a favorite dress, like a, an absolute number one favorite make of 2020, it has to be this dress just by the sheer number of times that I reach for it in my wardrobe. I wear it in the winter. It's like got deodorant stains on it, so please don't zoom in too close to it. But the number of times that I wear this in the summer and in the winter, because I'll just layer like long sleeve tops underneath this, it was one of the most worn things. And I just love the design of it. Like I totally hacked the hell out of this using the French poetry pattern. So I have the French poetry pattern here. It's a combination of McCall's M6955 for the straps. And then I use the cami skirt to inform the bottom because it's got four gathered tiers on it. So it's like so swishy and flowy. And then the back is this open back with a strap across the back that was just based on this inspiration photo that I found on Instagram. I love this dress so much. The fabric is so comfortable. Again, another um, viscose poplin, I wanna say, from Blackbird Fabrics. And who could go wrong with a small print black floral? Can you ever have enough? I don't think you can. The buttons were vintage that I purchased from Etsy. Do a little close up of those. They're this really pretty like mauve-ish brown taupe color. And everything about this dress just, just works. It's my number one favorite make from 2020 and I'm sure I will be wearing it constantly again this summer. The next project is this skirt. So there are things I actually don't like about it. The fabric color for one. When I purchased this pleated chiffon from mood.com, the photo made it look like it was a really dark burnt orange color. But despite it being brighter, I still wear it quite a bit. I just have to plan my outfit entirely around this skirt because it's such a loud piece. So it's difficult to pair with other things in my wardrobe because I don't have a lot that goes with it. But the style of the skirt is perfect in exactly what I wanted. So I have since ordered more pleated chiffon in like a champagne color and also a black because the more neutral skirts will just work really well in my wardrobe. I love the fit of it. I basically just took my waist measurement and then um, cut the fabric for it one and a half times or maybe 1.75 times my waist. I can't remember for sure. Um, I'll have to go back and look at my notes, but I cut the fabric um, one and a half or 1.7 times my waist and then gathered it to this waistband, which is a waistband from the rosary skirt pattern by Pauline Alice. So it was a really simple make. It's lined, again, a lot of my skirts that I've been making lately are lined in this fabric. It's Bemberg Rayon, which is a really breathable alternative to silk. And it just makes it really soft and like easy to get over tights and it doesn't stick to you in the summer. So I really, really like Bemberg Rayon for lining. So like I said, the color is not my favorite, but just judging by how much I still wear this and plan outfits around it, I'm putting it on my list of best makes for 2020 because of how much I wear it, even though it's not a color I would normally gravitate toward. It is based off of a skirt by Cezanne. Again, the skirt was called the Dino skirt. I'm not sure if they still sell that skirt anymore, but it was inspired by that and I really love it. It's a midi length, so it just hits just right. Love the skirt. Next up on my list of best patterns for 2020 has to be this Sicily slip dress made into the top by the pattern company Sewing Mason. I had seen this one floating around on Instagram for quite a while before I finally decided to make it for myself. I had this beautiful Atelier brunette fabric that I got from Fancy Tiger Crafts when I was in Denver for a friend's wedding a few years ago. I only bought a yard of it because it was quite pricey fabric and it had like a lot of special memories to me because Andrew and I went to this wedding together and he and my friend Jacob, he was one of my best friends. So I was just excited to see him get married. And for the longest time, this fabric just sat in my stash because one yard is a really hard quantity to do anything with. And I knew I wanted to make an item of clothing out of it. So I thought, hey, why not the Sicily slip dress, but in a top? And I love this top. It fits so well. It has a wonderfully inclusive size range. I really think that this pattern looks good on everybody. So if you haven't made this pattern yet and you like 90s influence, 90s style things, go get this pattern and go make it because it looks good on everybody. 
There are other variations that are not spaghetti strap. They have more like wider strap style as well. So if that's more your jam, you can make that one. But it's just so cute. And honestly, I do not know why I have not made this again for like the full dress version. I really need to get on that. I'm sure now that I'm like looking at this, I'm like, okay, now I'm looking at my fabrics. What can I use to make the Sicily slip dress? Because I need the full dress in my life. But I really, really love this top. It hasn't gotten a ton of wear yet just because when I made it, it was like, I think November when I made it. So I haven't worn it a whole lot yet for obvious weather reasons, but once the spring and summer hit, I'm sure I'll be wearing this a lot more. And then the last of my favorite makes for 2020, I couldn't not include this dress just because I feel like this is me in a dress. The square neck top. M6955. If you've been following me for a while, you know I have made that pattern to death. And this was the first time I think that I, no, it was a different dress, but this was the year that I discovered half circle skirts as an alternative to full circle skirts. So many benefits. For one, they take literally half of the fabric, so that's half of the materials of a full circle skirt, half of the time to spend hemming the bottom of it, and in the end result ends up looking a little less like cupcakey when you're wearing it, so it's not so like ultra girly, which I really like. It has kind of a more sophisticated approach to it, I suppose. And then to make it a little bit different from my other dresses, I added these ties, which are removable, but I think it just adds a little something extra to it. I love the fabric. It's a what is it? A textured tensile viscose in the blue mist color from Blackbird Fabrics. It's this wonderfully soft, like velvety texture almost. Hype, like super flowy um, fluid drape. And I just have the happiest memories associated with this dress because Andrew and I got up really early on a rainy, very windy day on the Brooklyn Bridge to go take photos of this dress so that there would be like hardly anybody on the bridge to stay socially distanced. And yeah, there was hardly anybody up there. So it was like a magical time taking these photos. And then later that day, it was the first day that the Met reopened. And when they reopened, they reopened at 25% capacity. So we got to see all of the paintings and our favorite like works of art with hardly anybody in the Met. So I just have like the happiest memories associated with this dress. I couldn't not include it in my favorite makes of 2020. And yeah, so that's why it's on there. And that is it for my best and worst makes in my opinion of 2020. If you've made any of these patterns or if you have any favorites or worst makes of 2020, let me know in the comments below. I'd be delighted to hear about them. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!